Yo, what's up, guys? My name is Sans World, and today I'm going to be teaching you guys how to make your very own future bass leads. Now, there's going to be various variations to this just because of the different amount of styles there are. The one we're going to be focusing on is pretty much the main one that everyone has been using in every track known to man. That's future bass, which is going to, you know, lead to it being the next big room house, just like deep house all sounds the same. Um, future bass will eventually sound the same, so it's good to get in the door before you know it gets oversaturated. So let's see what we can cook up today. So we're gonna be using serum because Silent One is too getting too old for me now, and a lot of the new banks that have been making a lot of hype in future bass have been made in serum. So what we're gonna be doing is first we're gonna make a set of chords, and you know we're gonna do a four bar kind of thing, you know because. All we, all we, all producers know is the four bar method. Especially if you're making dance music, you just stick by that one, two, three, four, four bar. Repeat, repeat. So we're just gonna make some chords. And here I'm just freestyling it, going with whatever pops into my head. Nothing crazy, guys. I'm sure you guys know how to make chords. I've taught it so many times. Okay, so now we have that part. Alright, so now we have our chords, even though they sound really shitty. Um, you know, now we can create the sound that we want to do. Now, it's very important that you play future bass sounds with chords, because if you don't do that, it's not going to sound as big, it's not going to sound as harmonic and as melodic as it sounds in those type of songs. You can get a really, like, you can literally get the sound that, let's say, flume or, or one of those guys made and if you play without the chords it's not going to sound the same it's not going to sound as good as it did in their track because the the whole effect that it takes you know that harmonic sound comes from chords being played together at the same time so once we have that now we can get to start working on our sound now the first thing we want to do is we want to choose the wavetables we're going to pick and this is totally up to you guys whatever you want to do you know, we can go with different ones, but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to stick with the saw, which is the most basic one, and it's the default one that Serum is going to put up for you guys. And what we're going to do is just do a standard super sawish one, which will be at 16 unison, maybe um, blend all the way up. We're going to do that with oscillator B2. Now, keep in mind, the more voices, right, the more unison you put up, that's the more voices coming out of each oscillator. So 16 plus 16, that's 32 voices, let's say. There might be more, I'm not too sure. And that is going to cause a lot of CPU problems, especially if you're running on, on, um, 
on a computer that's not that up to date. And that doesn't matter. It just means that you're going to have to be very careful. And if you get this lead and it's like 70% of your CPU is being used up when you're playing it, what you can do is you can bounce it out or lower the, the quality of Serum for that time being, um, which I'm sure it should have it like Diva has that feature in the Yuki Diva that I like to use a lot, which I have to, you know, lower the quality on it because I'm on a MacBook Pro now. All right, so what we're going to do here is another A unit sim. We're going to change the phase a bit, though, and the RAN down, which is going to be the area where the phase is going to lock in. For here, I'm just going to do it for the other side here. The reason I'm doing this is I just don't I don't want to create two layers that sound exactly the same. There's no point in it. It's like pile, getting a pile of shit and then piling more pile of shit on top of it. It's still a pile of shit. Um, that's like the most um, vulgar way of explaining it, but that's the best way I can do. Um, oops. Uh, to me, it makes a lot of sense, though. You want to kind of layer stuff that sounds differently together. That usually gives the best results, and it sounds a lot more cleaner. The next thing we're going to do is put a filter, and, there's, there, and then we're going to have two ways of, of doing some modulation here. We're going to either use the envelopes or the LFOs. Now... The envelope is going to activate every single time that you press a note or every single time, you know, one of these bad boys goes off. And I'm trying to open the... What happened to my cords? There you go. Oh, I'm not trying to record it. All right, so you just can see it's kind of a little bit punchy now because we put the phase and the rat really down and one, and one of them is pretty much at the edge here, starting at the edge. So that's going to give it that little punchy initial thing because it's at the edge at the highest point in the wavetable. So that's where that punchiness came through. So what we're going to do right now, and I need to put the volume up on my computer, um, is we're going to modulate this filter to open up. And this is going to help create that future bass sound. So there are two ways we can do this. We can either utilize LFOs, which we're going to route it to the cutoff, or we can utilize an envelope. The one you pick is going to determine on the type of um, on the type of patterns you have. Now, if you have patterns that are very long, and what I mean by this is they're very long, you're going to want to go with an LFO just to create more of that sense of movement. It's going to help create that illusion of movement in your sound more than an envelope because an envelope is going to activate and it's going to go through attack decay and it's going to stay at the sustain level until you let go and then the release is going to kick in after the MIDI stops sending information. And then, you know, it starts over. With LFO, it's just going to keep doing it as it goes. So if you have longer periods of silence you, like this, um, you can kind of use an LFO to keep it going if you want, like, like that or you can use an envelope and still get the same effect you're just gonna have to do something like this see this effect here with made by the midi i can recreate it using an lfo if i wanted to however i'm more of an envelope type of guy i do like lfos but i've never been too fond of them besides putting them on certain um pitches and phases to get like kind of that show tech um sound that was very popular which i think is still very popular to this day so um with that being said we're going to do this with an envelope which we are going to route here here. And what we're going to do is open it all the way, but we want to do give it a bit of attack. And now we're going to get that initial. The attack's going to make that initial effect. So the attack is going to tell the cutoff to open up slowly or initially fast, pretty much instantaneously, depending on what value you put on it. So the higher the attack, you know, the more longer it's going to take for the filter to open up. But there's a problem. If your attack is over, you know, too high to the point where the filter doesn't even open up before it reaches the end of this note and goes into this one, then too bad. It's not going to open up. It's just going to start over. As you can see there. So we're going to have it on here. So once we have that, you know, next thing we can do is get rid of the sustain if you want, and then you can kind of get this effect. You know, very, very simple effect. Here, what's happening is pretty much since there's no sustain, this is going to open up. And it initially, as long as you have the whole note holded, it's going to go back down no matter what. Um, but if I had this note sustain all the way up, and I, let's say I play the chord and I, and I keep it holding, this thing is going to go to the sustain level, which is at 100% right now. So that means it's going to be fully open, and it's going to remain open until you let go of the notes. That's what the sustain is going to be telling the cutoff. If you don't want that, you just get rid of it, and then you can and control the um, how long it takes for the sound to go back to zero via your decay time. Mm -hmm. 
once we have that, those are going to be the important features here. There's another feature called the release, which you guys might want to use. That's only if you're leaving the sustain up. I'm going to show it to you guys right now. Now, if my sound has a release, which means it's going to stick around longer than, than usual, um, if I take the filter off, I'm going to press a note right now. You see how long it takes? It sticks around like it has some sort of tail or reverb to it. That's what the release is doing. And look, with zero release, nothing's coming out, okay? So we're going to give it that, let's say, and we're going to put some filter. Now, let's say I have my sustain all the way up and I have a, I release, then that's when the release is really going to matter because then you'll be able to hear the filter cut off the tail of it. You can see that. So it's pretty cool. So I want it like this. Now other other techniques you can do is pretty much initialize white noise if you want and we're going to set it over here turn these guys on just so it goes through the same filter <laughs> And I always like to put white noise on noises. It just makes them sound a lot more fatter. And usually white noise here. Let's try this one. Instantly fatter. Now what we're going to do is go into the effects section, guys. And this is going to be a very important part. This is where we're going to make the sound kind of jump out. It's going to pretty much polish it. What we're going to do is increase dimension, increase size. And you can see we're already starting to get that future bass sound. Now, if you want to add hyper, that's all up to you, but it's just going to create more um, voices. Very, very simple. The other important thing is going to be the chorus will give you the illusion that you have a lot. Kind of like the chorus just creates an effect like there's more of something via, you know, some rates. Think of it as an LFO applied to something in the sound. Um, that's the most simplest way of explaining it. And hearing the effect is the best way of knowing what it does and how it sounds like. One of the things that I always t talk to with my students and people in general is that there are two ways you can learn. There's a way of knowing what, how to use something and then there's a way of knowing how something works. It's like in chemistry, um, we did this lab where we had to separate a lot of um, metals and find out what was in, in a certain metal that we got. And you know, I was doing everything, but I wasn't knowing why certain things were happening. Why was aluminum precipitating here when when zinc could have precipitated? Why didn't they precipitate at the same time? Stuff like that. So I was doing it. I knew how to do it. I just didn't know the knowledge behind it. Same thing here. You know, you can know what chorus is, but if you don't know how to use it, then what's the point? And, you know, as you can see, we're starting to get some CPU overload just because of Serum's... Um, craziness so one of the things that you can do here is go to global and go to oscillator setting and go to 1x that's going to allow you to lower the quality on it and it's going to pretty much make it so that um oops i don't even know why this is like this right now it's going to make it so that you don't um you don't have to fully utilize the whole power of serum but one of the things that i do is when i'm about to master the track is i like to put this at 4x and then i go to <laughs> I go to my, my Ableton and, and I record it. I bounce out that whole synth and then I have the wave file of it. That way, you know, I know it's ready to go. Okay, now the next thing you can add is delay or compressor. Now, compressor is the best one because you can use the multiband and literally this just makes shit pop out of your speakers. This is going to be over the top compression, pretty much what the name says. It's, you know, and it sounds so compressed. Um, and you know it's it's becoming a norm for people to use ott um that's pretty much how you can find it on ableton it's the same exact thing almost um and it just makes shit come out of your speakers now it's totally up to you if you guys are in it with the sound if not you can go with the normal compressor Finally, some reverb. There are two things you can do with reverb. The first one is you put the mix all the way up. You decrease the size.
and you're gonna get this type of sound. Now that's, that's totally up to you. If you guys want that sound? If you don't, just lower the uh, reverb. And there you go. All right, guys, so I had to restart my um, software because it was starting to crack it a lot. Hopefully, you know, it didn't bother you guys that much, or hopefully it didn't pass through the video because on my end, it was crackling a lot. Anyways, guys, um, as we were talking about stuff, um, you know, we have pretty much here the effects section where the hyper slash dimension one, we have the mix uh, dimension one here. The mix is set to 20%. And what the dimension does is pretty much just, you know, makes it kind of sound a little bit... Um, face so then it makes the illusion of kind of like <sighs> all right guys so we're back all right guys so i had to restart everything because um it was making some crackling noises that was really bothering me anyways um you know we talked about the reverb effect and then here lastly we have the filter now the filter is very interesting because this filter what you can do is pretty much necessarily you can use this as a second filter let's say that you know we want to utilize this filter for one of those cool effects like the mist like the formants you know that they have here you know, let's find a better one let's say that and then we just want that effect we can move this down and just apply this envelope here you know totally up to you guys if you want to utilize that but for this sound i'm going to utilize just you know the normal low pass that is set by default And remember the reverb trick if you want it to. Totally up to you guys. Anyways, guys, thanks for tuning in to this episode on how to make your own future bass leads. This is just one way of making this type of style. The different thing that would occur here is let's say you want to make something different. You would just change the wavetables and go from there. Other leads like the square leads and all that that are sustainable, I'm sure they're fairly easy to make for you guys, so I won't touch on that. But this is just the, the basics of a future base lead. Hopefully this helps you guys out in venturing into this if that's what you guys want. And I'll see you guys next time. Take care and don't forget to subscribe.